WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're looking forward to this next interview, and we've been looking forward to it for a long time. Uh, Todd Thompson is on the phone, ready to chat with us. He is a talented man and a lot of credentials to his name. I was looking at his bio online. Uh, in addition to all the things I saw, he's an actor. He's the co-founder of a movie company or filmmaking company called Stars North film or films i'm not really sure if i have that right he's a producer director the reason we came to know todd thompson a little bit we're going to get to know him a lot more right now i hope um is because we were fascinated with the the highwaymen and we've talked about the highwaymen their, their artwork has been at the appleton museum here in ocala and i love a great story of you know the underdog making good i love the story of the person the humble little person just trying to make a way in his life and suddenly some light comes down from heaven and mm -hmm. and shines on that person or in this case this group of people uh, who worked as I, the way i understand he's gonna todd's gonna help me understand this better but they, they worked as house builders and and they worked in construction and and they were painters and and uh, they had wood and they created these beautiful paintings with not Art supplies that cost, you know, $20 for, for a micro brush or $100 for a, a special kind of paint. I mean, they had yeah. house paint. They had wood from, you know, it, it's just amazing. And they were trying to, and they weren't doing it to try to make a name for themselves. They were doing it to make a few dollars so they could, you know, get another mm -hmm. meal. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely I love this kind of a story. The, the, the highwaymen, from what I understand, include at least one woman. I think they might, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, they're called the highwaymen as a group. The Florida highwaymen, I think, is the, uh, the actual what we call them. And I don't, I don't really know that I know the story as to where they got the name. However, uh, can I just play, before we speak to Todd, I want to play the, uh, the audio to the trailer that has already been made to a movie that's not even made yet. Which yeah. I find that fascinating, too. <laughs> the movie, when it comes out, and it will come out, I, I'm so confident about this one. This, this should be a, a no-brainer for whoever makes these decisions. I don't know. Uh, it's called The Highwayman, or it will be called. Let me just play this uh, trailer. Once upon a time, there was a boy. And he lived in a place more beautiful than you could possibly imagine. This boy, he was magic. And he changed our lives forever. In time, they will call us artists. But to most, we was known as the Howie. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, Todd Thompson is on the phone. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in my car, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your car? <laughs> uh, in Orlando, Florida. In Orlando. Wow. Well, good for you. Um, well, this is an exciting project. Let's learn a little bit about you, first of all. It says here you're an actor. W would we know you from anything? Uh, I, I've been, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the entertainment industry, I guess, for since I was a kid. I My, my dad took me to see Star Wars when I was seven, and... Mm. I got hooked, I guess. But, um, yeah, I've, I've worked on a lot of TV shows and movies. Um, uh, Roseanne, uh, a Tom Hanks series called From Earth to the Moon. I, I did a movie called The Green Mile, uh, The Water Boy. There was a movie shot in Florida here. Um, another piece of African-American history called Rosewood, actually. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wonderful. Directed, directed by John Singleton. Um, so, yeah, I've had my... Fair share of fun. Boston's Creek. Can't well, forget that one. Well, cool. And I hope I, I hope I didn't do something I shouldn't have done by asking you that. But I just, you know, we are all curious when we hear that somebody's mm -hmm. an actor. If we, we may, if we can put a face to the voice and the name. Um, you also co-founded something called Stars North. Is it films or film? Uh, Stars North Films. We it's Stars North. You know, keep it simple. But um, yeah, we're a film production company uh, based here in uh, Orlando, Florida. And how long has that been around? How long have you got? And who's who's the other? It says co-founders. So that means there's another person, right? Yeah, well, I, I founded it with um, a very good friend of mine, uh, Belinda DeSantis. We actually, um, I, we I, we both been in Orlando about twenty years now, I guess. Um, we're and we're both from the north, which is where the north comes from. Ah, uh, okay. 
that she's from Michigan. I'm from uh, Cleveland originally. But um, since then, uh, we branched out. I have a producing partner named Catherine Kelly, who's Tampa-based. Uh, Marvin Winans, Jr., um, who is also Tampa-based, is now in L.A. So we've got a little team of folks. Um, Pete Raimundo is a, a good friend of mine and a, my a writing partner, collaborator, if you will. I'm Ryan Conroy. So a lot, a lot of folks that um, yeah, have this background or about Area. Yeah, I, I have so many things I want to ask you. I'm curious about the business end of movie making and how the how the money gets together and how you you get how a movie gets made. Period. Um, but before we go there, can I ask you how you became interested in the Highwaymen specifically? Yeah, it's, it's interesting actually. Um, I was having lunch one day with um, a, a gal by the name of Val Davis, who is a Disney Entertainment attorney. She's actually um, also a avid Highwaymen collector, and um, we were just it, she loves movies as well. And we were just having lunch talking about films, and she started telling me the story about these uh, African American artists back in the '60s that uh, she always thought would make a great you know story for a film. And I mean, this was like 10, 11 years ago, and I just got hooked. <laughs> And I always just kind of kept it close to the chest and, you know, started reading up a little bit about it over the years, collecting books, uh, meeting people. I met uh, a, a great collector, a great guy named Jeff Cook through Val, who um, is also an avid collector. He must have three, four hundred paintings, I would think, in his collection now. Wow. And uh, he, he's just been a great uh, collaborator as well, just kind of giving us some insight about who these folks were and, and what they were all about and at the end of the day it became our conduit to the artist. I mean, they, they really knew and trusted him because he's known them for so many years. So when we actually made the, the conscious decision to let's go make produce this into a film, um, you know, he was our connection to them and getting us to, uh, you know, set up interviews and really get dive deep into like who they were and what they were all about. Our community was very fortunate about uh, a year ago, the uh, Appleton Museum of Art here in Ocala was um, allowed to have the traveling exhibit of the highwaymen, and there were even two highwaymen still living that uh, took the time to do speeches to introduce the art, which was fascinating. Yeah, I mean, they, they are just a amazing, fascinating group of people and, um, and and really just role models in my mind, you know, quite honestly. I mean, not only just because of where they came from and who they are, but just the fact that they are, were so persistent in what they wanted to do and who they wanted to be in life. And I think that's just something we all can learn from, really, quite honestly. Now, the, 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 the visual to the trailer shows a, a, one of the highwaymen or an actor portraying one of the highwaymen walking. Were they primarily walking? Is that where they got the name from? No. Um, I mean, the trailer, first of all, um, when we decided to you know, move forward on this project, we wanted to produce something that you know, could be a teaser, so to speak, to sort of to get people to get a feel for what this was going to be about. Yeah, um, yeah. And we... I literally, we shot the trailer in a day and, um, we, you know, put it together without having a script per se. We didn't even do our research at the time. I mean, we, we had some background information, of course, from reading about them over the years, but we hadn't died, you know, dove deep into like the one-on-one -on -one interviews at that point yet. Wow. Which was, well, if you, can do, if you can do something that good without being prepared, <laughs> yeah, my goodness, that, that is a testament to your talent then. So, so, uh, so you have been interviewed. Is, is, the, is the movie going to be, how do I ask this? Not a, is it a documentary? Is it a story? Is it a true story? What, what is it? It's a, it's a feature-length film based on a true story. It, it's not a documentary. It's not a docudrama. It's not even a biopic, quite honestly. Um, I, it, but it, it's based on true history. And what I really wanted to do was, um, I just I, I just kind of went back to you know the movies that I grew up with loving as a kid. And I mean, I love all kinds of movies. I love all genres of movies, um, including biopics. But I found myself like watching and rewatching movies that took me on a journey, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so when I, when we dove into this project, um, you know, we pulled out all the facts and the fun facts and the things that happened that we knew we wanted to include in the story and laid them out on the timeline. But I, but, and, and this kind of lended itself naturally to the project anyways, we, we sort of turned it into a modern day treasure hunt because the way they got their name to answer that question, um, there was a curator who, um, basically discovered, started discovering their work in the early nineties. And, you know, what turned into one, what, what started off as one painting turned into many paintings of the similar style, but signed by different artists. And it started, you know, leading his curiosity deeper and deeper and deeper, leading him to Fort Pierce. 
And sure enough, he uncovered this 26 artists who are all painting the same way. And I mean, it's hard enough. To be, it's, it's hard enough, I think, to be a talented artist or be recognized as a talented artist, let alone discover 26 of them all in one place. Wow. And um, so it's kind of a little miracle in itself, in a way. But um, when he found out, you know, how they produced their paintings and more importantly how they sold them, that's where the name Highwaymen came into play um, because they literally hit the road and sold them on the road. Was it their primary source of income after a while or were they still building houses? Well, they, I mean, they, they would do all sorts of uh, jobs. I mean, a lot of them were uh, fruit pickers. Uh, they worked in agriculture. Lot, you know, the hard labor jobs back in the 60s that, you know, African Americans were limited to. Um, but they want, that's what they, that was their whole driving force. You know, they wanted to rise above that and, 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 and prosper. And wow. so they found a way to, they found a way to do that. You know, they basically found a way to become entrepreneurs um, at a time when they were very limited as to what they could do, where they could go probably. And, Gosh, I can't wait to um, see this story. I can't wait to see the film that you're making, Todd. Um, can you hang on there? We have to take a little break for the weather and a couple of commercials and, uh, and then we'll be back. Todd Thompson is on the phone down in Orlando in his car somewhere. Yes. <laughs> uh, obviously he's got many, many talents and many, many hats that he wears. And, and the one thing that got our attention was the idea that there's a film being made about the Florida Highwaymen called The Highwaymen. Can't wait for it to come out. I want to find out more, but we'll be doing that when we come back. This is The Source WLCA. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Intervals of clouds and sun with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm around, mainly during the afternoon hours over the interior sections, high 84 to 88. Tonight will be mostly cloudy with a couple of showers and thunderstorms, low 71 to 75. For tomorrow, some sun along with a couple of showers and heavy thunderstorms, mainly during the afternoon hours, high tomorrow between 84 and 88. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Your home is safe. Or is it? AA Lock, Dock, and Security. The name has been a staple in Ocala since 1985. Do you have the right equipment in place to have peace of mind when you are at home or away? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security. 219 Northwest 10th Street. 867-1965. Your weekends are getting a little retool. Swear to God, not making a joke. Check this out. New shows? Check. We are Buzzwords. Some new talent? Check. Let's welcome the guys. Let's get it going. Arnie Spanier. Unbelievable. TJ Reeves. This is what you get. Zebra. Your weekends are on fire. Because that's how exotic it is. We are Buzzwords. Wow. Uh, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock, I, w I was saying, wow, at this website, I'm looking at starsnorth.com. Uh, gosh, all kinds of winter accolades and, uh, and so many movies. Gosh, we, we, there's a lot of catching up we have to do. We just discovered a, a wealth. He, uh, Todd was saying they discovered a wealth of artists when they yes. discovered the 26 uh, Highwaymen. And uh, I think we've discovered a wealth of films that maybe I've never seen any of them. Uh, Todd, good morning again, Todd. Thank you for hanging through the break. Good morning. So I'm looking at your website, Stars North, and uh, you, how many films have you guys made? Oh, gosh, we've probably done about um, uh, 10 or 12 short films. Um, we've definitely had our fair share of festival screenings and whatnot. So uh, we've been, uh, I've been making movies since I was seven, though, like I said. Just, uh, wow. I, I love it. I love, I love telling stories. That is exciting stuff. And, and um, w can we see the films? Are they, do, does this website have links to the films themselves, or are they on Amazon? Or what do you, where do you have films from? Netflix? Um, the, the, they're in various places. I mean, the, the clips of all the films are on the website there. Um, uh, a couple of our films are available for sale, like Crooked, for example, was a film we did um, for the American Dental Association. Um, that's available on Amazon. Um, but uh, most of the films were uh, quite honestly produced just to, uh, you know, ex they're called experimental films and they were screened at festivals and um, 
showing special events. I've got uh, two of the films are playing uh, at the Melbourne Film Festival next month, and the Orlando Film Festival as well here in Orlando. So, uh, so we've uh, we've made our way around. Uh, you had said earlier that uh, the Highwaymen were in the era of the 1960s, and they were sort of limited as to the places that that they could go. Do you show that uh, adversity and non-acceptance in your film? Oh, I'm sorry, you broke up there. What was the last part of the question? Oh, do do you show uh, non-adversity and non-acceptance in your film since you started earlier, since you stated earlier that the Highwaymen had a limited uh, areas that they could go on? Well, it, you know, it, it's a good question, um, and it's kind of funny. We, uh, you know, a lot of the films that we've all seen, including, you know, Best Picture last year, 12 Years a Slave, um, it, they, they all seem to constantly address the subject of racism and, you know, brutality and whatnot. And, um, you know, while I, while I think that's, that's obviously a part of our history and where we've come from, um, what I found ironic about the High Women story was you know, we walked into those interviews expecting to hear just that, you know, guys getting pulled over and beaten up and all that stuff. And, and quite honestly, it was just the opposite. I mean, there are actually open doors for them. And in a lot of times, a lot of humorous situations, quite honestly, um, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I mean, one of the situations was um, uh, James Gibson got pulled over by the police uh, on his, uh, you know, out one day selling, and he was driving a very fancy car at the time. And the officer pulled him over, wanting to know, you know, what a black man was doing driving such a fancy car. Oh no! And um, and then when he told him, when he popped open his trunk and showed him, he thought he'd stole those paintings. But then he proved to him that he didn't. Oh man! So they were still, they were they were still wet. And he ended up not only selling a painting to the officer, but the officer took him down to the station so that all the guys at the station could buy paintings up because it happened to be Mother's Day weekend. So, oh um, wow! So it was, it was those kinds of stories we kind of came upon. So really, I mean, which what we really wanted to do with this film was tell a story that, you know, yes, took place during racist times. Yes, took place, uh, you know, during the Jim Crow South. But it was actually about a group of guys that rose above and prospered and found a way, you know, beyond that. Because I, I really feel, and it goes back to, like, I, I really feel that, you know, if you have the, the ability and the, and the talent to, to tell a story... You know, we have a responsibility maybe to, to, to move past, you know, to move past the, the hurt and, and start, start the healing process by maybe showing a different side of it and, and you know, showing and, and getting people to get and getting people over that hump. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, try, just trying to get people, uh, you know, away from showing them the same story over and over again about racism and whatnot. And this is a story about celebration. It's really a story about guys who found a way to make it and had a great time doing it. Oh, how wonderful. I love this perspective. Uh, I love uh, what you're telling us about you, too, because we see something about you by hearing you sp say those things. Rob, Rob and I have this funny thing we do we we try to imagine what a home movie looks like of somebody when they were children mm -hmm. because we have this theory that if you see a little girl playing with a toy horse she probably grew up to be a horse rider or you see a little boy playing with a car he probably loves cars or is a mechanic or something so a little boy playing drums probably is a musician mm -hmm. i don't see you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna say dennis the menace <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't see you like I'm, I'm sure you're fascinated with film but you know what i see in you i'm not trying to be psychic or anything here but i imagine that if i were to look at you through some kind of a, I don't know, Wizard of Oz miracle ball or something, and, and and I could see you sitting in the movie theater when you were younger, I think you saw the people. I think it was the people and something deep in those people that really attracted you to those films that you grew to love, more so maybe than the storyline, if that makes sense. I mean, that's what it looks yeah, like. It yeah. That's what it looks like in these... Actually in these films, and I'm, lo I'm not looking at the films right now, but I mean, just listening to you talk and looking at the shots that you, that are put on your website, that's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah, no, you're right about that. Um, also, uh, I had the, when, when I was growing up, my aunt and uncle owned a movie theater near where I where we lived, and um, so I, I, every weekend, you know, I was at the movies, and I, I watched a lot of my films from the projectionist booth, so I got to uh, oh, wow. not only watch the film, but I actually, you know, really spent time watching the audience and seeing what they reacted to and and what made them laugh what made them cry and so i, I kind of had a unique perspective uh 
when I would go to the movies as a kid. Your ability to connect with people, to actually get interviews with the highwaymen to make them trust you is really phenomenal because you had to have you you had to have that area of trust before they could really open up and be comfortable to tell you their stories and share their uh, most uh, intimate emotions, whether it's sadness or happiness. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's where uh, Jeff Cook really played a huge role for us. I mean, they, they knew him much longer than they've known us even to this day. Um, they've known them, him for years. Um, but, uh, you know, I, we, we, we've made a promise to them, and I, I want to stand by that promise that, you know, I, w- I want to make a film that it makes them proud, you know. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, it's based on a true story. Not every piece of it's going to be exactly the way it happened or exactly in the order it happened, but... You know, I want to capture the spirit of what it was, and I want them to know that, you know, their life stood for something, and and I want them to really know that, you know, what they did with the paintbrush, how how much it affected people in so many different ways um, beyond the art. And it's amazing. And and the fact that they were, I guess you would consider rustic materials, like I say, they weren't going to Michael's art store (laughs) and and paying $20 for a little tiny brush, which which is not unusual, I guess, nowadays. But, I mean, they had br- house brushes. It's just mm-hmm. amazing that they did that, a- especially in the light of the fact. I, you know, I don't know what it was like, though. I I, I think you know, when you try to imagine, Robin grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up in New York. It sounds like we have that in common. We didn't grow up here. And I certainly wasn't here during the years when uh, segregation, was it called segregation? Yeah. Se- segregation, separation, right? But but we've had guests in the studio um, the the, uh, the sisters the children of of people who remember when Silver Springs was whites only yes and and the uh, the uh, there was a sister park called Paradise Park Paradise Park it yeah it was for blacks only I I just can't imagine that but more more important than I can't imagine what the relationships were like between the black people and the white people back in those days or were there none did they not well it was, it was funny I mean I, I kind of experienced the same thing um and one of the first movies I did when I moved to Florida was Rosewood as I said and um. You know, that movie took place in the 1920s. It was about a, a New Year's Day massacre, um, a, a white town called Sumter that literally burned the black town of Rosewood to the ground over a rumor. And, um, you know, we would film these scenes late into the night, um, you know, fighting each other. And then we'd break for lunch and break bread together around the table. And it was like, I mean, you, just, you could just see from that moment, uh, you know, how far we've come. And, and you know, it, it's, all, it's almost like surreal to think that, those times even existed, but I, but I know they do, and I, I know they didn't, I know they still do. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, the more we can do with art and music and, you know, things that really have a long reach effect on people. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, art, yeah. I think it's just a, there's an opportunity there. I love the uh, I love the fact that you have a little a, a little child in your visual because ultimately that is is who the uh, adult mentors and uh, are are going to reach are the little children to set good examples because children love to be creative and follow their hearts. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the the movie that got our attention to you, uh, I think, is is going to be a big movie for you, and it's going to be a, just a, a joy for us as as viewers. It's called The Highwaymen. Uh, is that for sure, or does a, does it? I don't know movie making much, but does it change ever? Do you come up with a name and then somebody gives it a different name? Well, I don't know. After hearing your intro, maybe we should call it The Highwaymen and One Woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do. <laughs> I don't think she'll mind. <laughs> but there was one woman, right? There was one. Yeah, Mar- yeah, Marianne Carroll. She was yeah, the only yeah. female of the group. And, um, oh, wow, and, uh, did a great job. Well, you mentioned your your partner Belinda. Uh, Todd, I think you and Belinda are onto something really amazing. And it says here on your website, celebration. Is that the town you live in? Uh, it's where we're based out of. Yeah, which is just outside of Orlando. Which I went to celebration one time for snowflakes. Yeah. I w- they had a Christmas thing. With fake snow. Uh, yes, they did. And it tasted like soap, though. I just <laughs> just tell you, it's not snow. It's fake. <laughs> okay, you're not supposed to. Uh, you're not supposed. You're not supposed to stick your tongue out. But, uh. <laughs> uh, Todd, thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming on the air. Any any idea of when the film might be out? How do how do we uh, how do you even know? I'm always amazed when I look at these things on the that website that shows you when movies are coming out mm-hmm. that they know exactly when it's coming out. Well, we're, I mean, you know, films that are already wrapped up and, and edited, you can you can set a release date. We're actually in development on the film right now. It's, we're securing financing for it. Um, we are aiming to be filming um, 
late winter, early spring, if all the stars line up here. And uh, we're excited. All right. And I can't wait to hear the rest of the score because what you have in the trailer is phenomenal. I think there's a lot of talent here, you know, in Florida. And, um, you know, one of the other important things about the project is the fact that, you know, we're shooting it here in Florida. We're, we're trying to help revitalize the entertainment industry here. And um, it, it, there's no better story than a highwayman, I think, to do that with. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Todd, for being on the air with us here. Um, we'll have to send people to the website to learn more because we're out of time. Uh, great conversation. Good luck with everything you're doing. Please, if you're ever in the area, don't be shy about calling us and asking if you can be in the studio. We'd love to meet you in person. Um, go to uh, Todd's website, starsnorth.com, starsnorth.com. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was great talking to you guys. All right. Take care. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The campaign against militants continuing with more airstrikes in Syria, but those actions also raising terror concerns. The Joint Intelligence Bulletin obtained by the AP 